Hey guys, Nick here. I got an update for you. I had mentioned uh, in the last Mikado UI sensor video that I did um, under the battery saver function that I was putting in uh, three milliamps worth of degradation per flight. Now, I knew that I didn't have all of the information that I wanted, um, but I wanted to get something in there. Uh, I've done a little bit more research in the meantime, uh, talked with Justin, compared that uh, to some of my own personal data, did a little digging on the internet, and I think I've uh, and actually talked with um, the guys from Mikado over in Germany to kind of see what their take on it was. And I think I've come up with what I believe to be settings that are a lot closer. Um, one of them is going to be very, um, will be quite close. And the other one is really going to depend on your flying style. Um, so anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So again, we have motor switch in hold, safety switch on. We have my good trusty Goblin 570 over here with some old, very tired 6S5000 milliamp OptiPower packs. These are 200 plus cycle packs. So we're going to plug that in. Uh, this one is 5,000 number two. And when I go here, I'm going to go down to application setup. And battery logbook. And then into battery saver. Now, down here, um, we have store aging and flight aging. Now, before, um, I had kind of ballparked, okay, well, about three milliamps worth of loss per flight. But there's a lot more to it than just the milliamp per flight number. That's going to depend on your pack size. What I want you guys to really know is the actual kind of the calculations behind these two. So for store aging, that is the one that's going to be fairly more accurate. There's been a lot of uh, studies. You can Google it and find, um, you know, storage capacity per storage time. A lot of this will depend on your storage conditions. We're going to start talking about this a little more on the podcast as well. But, you know, we really, really need to be storing our batteries at storage voltage, about 3.85 or 3.8 um, volts per cell. It makes a huge difference in the long run. I am a major culprit of this. I am horrible about it. And boy, let me tell you, when I started looking at some of these charts on how much more drastically the pack loses capacity when stored at 4.2 volts per cell, I will never be doing it again. I mean, it's not worth it. Uh, if you have a hard time going and dropping 150 bucks on a 6S pack, I mean, almost just think about, well, how would you like to drop $180 or $200? Because that's really what you're doing by not storing your batteries um, at about room temperature or below, and then also at 3.8 volts per cell. Okay, so anyway, here's the magic numbers that we're going for. For the storage aging, we want about 1.1% per 100 days. So that's a percentage of your pack capacity. Again, that's 1.1%. So for this pack, because it's a 5,000 milliamp, I'm going to plug in 55 milliamps. So see it changing over on the right. And again, I'm going for the number on the right here. So it goes from 52 to 57. 57 will be just fine. That will give me that sweet spot. Um, this is about what all of that data shows because from now on, I'm gonna make sure I'm storing my batteries under ambient, which again, try and keep them cool. Do not store them in the hot sun and at 4.2 volts for cell. So under optimal conditions, uh, storage conditions, we're looking at uh, in this case, 1.1% or about 55, or I'm going to put in 57 milliamps per 100 days. Okay, so now down to the flight aging, this is where things get a little bit trickier. It's not quite so cut and dry. And I'll explain why. How much your pack degrades per flight 
is drastically going to depend on what sort of conditions you put them in. Just like storage, use and discharge can be done in completely different ways. These can be, you know, light sport flights or hovering flights versus speed flights. So this percentage that we're going to use down here really depends on your personal flying style. For, for me, a set of packs might last 200 cycles or 250 cycles, but maybe for someone who's flying speed, they might be done at 40 cycles or 50 cycles, the same pack. So there really isn't one value that you can just plug in here that's the answer to everything. Um, and, and I'll get into it in the bump, another bump controller video about how you can kind of, on a, when you buy new packs, and you're flying them consistently how can you how you can monitor your actual storage capacity and then tailor this number to fit your needs but now for me again kind of hip shot data comparing with what i've seen for, for these packs and again i didn't log these so i, I can't be 100 percent accurate and what i've the information i got from mikado and kind of just a little bit of everyone I am going to start at a percentage of 0.05% per flight, okay? Now, if we do the math on this 5,000 milliamp pack, that's going to put me at, what do you know, 2.5 milliamps per flight. But here's where it gets tricky. So we got three over there, and flight, 80, flight aging is 10. Now, I can go 10... There's nine, but we got a lot of numbers in here, so it's a pretty rough adjustment. There's seven, and it's showing, too. So I will probably settle right around a uh, flight aging value of eight, which is going to be ballpark two and a half milliamps per flight. That, again, I am going to be adjusting this throughout this next year and fine-tuning this value. Now, the good part is I will be able to find a value... Um, that'll probably work for the majority of my helis. Yeah, okay, maybe my 500 SS uh, doing the speed runs, I'm gonna need a different value. Um, but for the most part, I fly with the same style across um, across all, all of my helis. And this might also change depending on your setup. Like maybe the old 570 here running on a 6S, it might be harder on packs than say my 700 is running on 12s at a lower head speed so again you really do need to get um, some cycles in yourself um, on your batteries with your flying style to get this number completely dialed in but for now i'm starting at 0.05 percent per flight which is about two and a half milliamps per flight uh, with this 6s 5000 so I hope that guy that gives you guys a little bit more information on kind of how this works. Uh, the storage aging, again, I'm fairly confident that you will be, without doing any of the actual testing and data myself, just from the research that I've done, I feel pretty good uh, about the 1.1% loss there. Um, again, that's at storage voltage and at ambient uh, temperature or lower, not hot. So try and keep you know 70 degrees Fahrenheit or say 25 degrees Celsius or lower, um, and uh, you should be okay there. So hope this helps. Um, we're going to be talking about this more on the podcast, get a little bit more in depth to it. But I wanted to get this out there so that you can, so that you guys can get this changed and adjusted as soon as possible. The theme for this year is gonna be take care of our batteries and try and get the most out of them. So sweet, thank you very much. And uh, we'll catch you guys around.